Hi there, in this demo I'm going to show you SQL Server 2012 PowerView and how it can be used to explore data, visualise it in different ways uh, and uncover the insights and the story that that data tells you and then publish it and share it with other people around your organisation. And to do that I'm going to play the role of uh, somebody in a banking group who's looking at the mortgage applications that we've had and how they've changed over the last few years. So if I fire up the PowerView interface, you can see it's very easy uh, to, to start working with, designed to look and feel like Office. I have this big area on the, uh, in the middle here where I can start to drag different bits of data. Uh, and I can do things like adding, adding titles in these uh, uh, as I get these prompts. So it's my uh, Contoso Banking Group Mortgage Applications Analysis. And you can see the data that I've got uh, already published here in the model on the right hand side. So I've got information about the different applications and about the different products that we uh, provide. And just by clicking on the product header there, you can see it will start to pull in uh, all of the information about the different products that we provide. So I can see I've got images and logos, I've got names and then some statistical information about it as well, arrangement fees and the like. If you want to start looking at actually the, the applications uh, uh, that have been made against each of these products, maybe I want to look at the different brands, the type of product they are, type of mortgage, uh, and then the number of applications that we've had for each one of those. It would make more sense to visualize this in a sort of column chart. So I can just click again and change, uh, change that visualization. And you see each time I'm clicking in here, I'm working with the, the, uh, the actual data. I don't have placeholders, I don't have sample values. So it's very easy to start building these things up. Let's also take a look here at our uh, number of applications by the loan amount, uh, how much deposit was required for each of these applications. Uh, so you can see I'm quickly starting to build up a, uh, a nice visual dashboard that will show me this, uh, uh, this information. So now let's also do a bit of a trend information. Let's look at the number of our applications over different time periods. Makes more sense to see that as a line chart. And if I drag that one out, I've got a complete dashboard. That was about 10 to 12 clicks. So it's really quick to build these things within, uh, within PowerView. But the great thing about all of this is it's completely interactive. So if I'm just interested in, well, it's uh, interesting, we, we haven't uh, have very many applications of 90% mortgages. So let's uh, click on that and you can see everything else gets filtered down. So I can see it's just one mortgage, up, uh, one mortgage product uh, in the, the Contoso brand. That contributed about about a third of the fixed rate mortgages uh, in the Contoso brands were, were with the 90% uh, loan to value, and they were fairly steady. But there have been a big drop in the last couple of years. Now if I compare that maybe to our 80% mortgages, they've been much more variable. Uh, they've gone up in the last couple of years, uh, and they were purely tracker mortgages. That's interesting, and we've got a, um, a you know a visualization that, that's t starting to tell us something about this data already. Now there's, I think the, the, the way this has changed over time is a, a certainly an interesting one to investigate in a bit further. If we just look at our tracker mortgages, you can see that they've been uh, fairly variable. They, they, we had a peak of applications in sort of 2002, and they've picked up again recently. Compare that to the fixed rate mortgages, well, they've had a very, very different sort of distribution. And I wonder whether that's, that's changed in different ways over time. What I can do is I've got a few different views I've already set up that will help me investigate this. So for example here I've got this sort of trellis chart and there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can visualise this. And we can see that particularly in the most recent year, in 2010, we have many more tracker mortgages than we did fixed rate. The green ones representing fixed rate much smaller there than the, the trackers in purple. Now I've got an idea that this might have something to do with the, uh, the base interest rates that Bank of England set. So I've actually got some data in here coming from the Bank of in England that helps me do that comparison. So at the top I can see the number of applications we've had uh, by tracker and fixed rate mortgages over time. And this allows me to animate this and compare it against our Bank of England base rates which I have down the bottom. So you can see uh, back in sort of 2000 the base rates were running about 6% uh, and uh, you know in, in the last couple of years they've been down at 0.5%. But if I start to animate this and look at how the changes, uh, the, the applications of tracker and fixed rate mortgages have changed, I start to see some really interesting patterns. Right at the start here in 2000, when these base rates were really high, people were fixing their rates because they didn't want to go up any further. But then within a couple of, month, uh, a couple of quarters, as they started to come down again, more and more people were applying for tracker mortgages. They're going down, they want, to, want it to follow that base rate and they'll get the best deal. So we've got some quite savvy customers out there, and I can animate it uh, to, to, to see things over the next few years.
Something else interesting happens here until 2003. As soon as the interest rates go up, we see a spike in the number of fixed rate applications. So we've got some people who are very reactive and uh, uh, you know, reacting very quickly and jumping on the, the fixed rate mortgages as they go up. We can see things changing over the last few uh, last couple of years, uh, and then uh, sort of into 2007, we saw that increase in the fixed rate mortgages because the Bank of England base rate is sort of heading upwards, and everybody's expecting that that to continue. But then, of course, the credit crunch bites in 2008, and look what happens to the to to, to the different uh, uh, applications that we're getting. Since the base rates dropped, many more people are looking at tracker mortgages, and that's interesting. And actually, we, we, we might look at that into a little bit more detail. Let's let's just drill into, uh, filter that view down to, to, to just the last couple of years. So we've got 2008 to 2010. Close those filters again. And now rather than looking at just the fixed rate and tracker mortgages, let's also look at the, the individual mortgage, mortgage products. Uh, rather, let's look at the loan amount for those different project, uh, products. So we can see in 2008, when uh, most people were buying fixed rate mortgages, uh, it was around that 95%. So we had lots of people buying uh, uh, buying houses with very small small amounts of deposit. But as we all know, during the banking crisis, uh, it became much harder to get those those uh, uh, mortgages with a small deposit. And we can see the tracker rate mortgages were, were uh, much more popular. Uh, they, those uh, they, we saw many more applications for those those mortgages. So I found some really interesting things in the data here, and this is the sort of stuff that I might want to share uh, and, and present around the rest of my organisation. And I can do that from PowerView by exporting this to PowerPoint. And then whenever I'm uh, in PowerPoint using one of these presentations, I can uh, have some, some nice formatting, I can put in a contents page here, but I get exactly the same visualisations in those slides. And in fact, if I present that from within the presenter view, I can still interact with that data. I can still do those animations, I can still slice and dice it, and I can still see things how, uh, how things have changed over time. So that's been a demo of SQL Server 2012 PowerView, and hopefully it's given you some ideas of how you might be able to use that in your own organisation. Thanks very much.